Hey there, how are you doing? My name is Angel and I like all things that are mysterious, right? So I actually found another article and it's from Ranker.com and I know I don't have good luck with this website, but it is what it is. It seems like it doesn't matter what website it is. I have issues with them. So anyways, um, so it's from Ranker.com. And the title is, 20 People Describe the Horrible Backstories Behind Houses Up for Sale. Now, <laughs> I like going and look at houses, right? Like, I'm one of them weird people that truly likes, like, old historical houses. And, like, the details that they used to put into houses that they don't put into houses anymore. Or to find them kind of details are extremely expensive houses or mansions. So it just blows my mind. But <laughs> let's get into some of these stories. So anyways, the next time you go house hunting, be sure to thoroughly look into the backstory of the house you're, in, you're interested in. These properties might have been inhabited by infamous offenders used by members of the adult industry or contain the essence of the now deceased former owners. Real estate agents must, by law, disclose the truth about those potentially haunted houses, but some may not even know what had happened there unless they speak to the neighbors. These Reddit accounts detail what went down in homes before their current owners purchased them. Turn all of the lights on and remember that home isn't just where the heart is there are plenty of horrors too <laughs> um and i'll make sure you know i screenshot everything so i'm really glad that the person that wrote the story that their name is there i really like that okay asked about a water leak the lady next door to me passed and wasn't found until she was <clears throat> more liquid than solid on her living room carpet. The family couldn't pay back taxes or something, and the house went to HUD to auction. HUD paid for some cleanup, but not to replace the carpet. Only to steam clean it. So it finally sold and was talking to the guy who was flipping it. Before I could mention the passing, he asked if the house had a water leak under the foundation because when they ripped up the carpet and pad to put down the laminate floor, it was really dirty and got all over them and their clothes. Oh, that's gross. Told him what happened and how HUD went cheap on what to fix before the auction. He got green as a pea and started puking right there on the side of the fence. I don't blame him, me too. <laughs> that's gross. I'd be so mad. All right, the next one. An adult production was shot there. <laughs> an old friend of mine bought a nice house in a quiet neighborhood the place is beautiful and has a really nice deck out back with a hot tub about three weeks after closing he was cleaning out some previously owner junk in one of the closets and found an old dvd it was a bridget the midget porno with a hot tub scene on the cover his hot tub it was epic <laughs> The next one, they dug a basement. My grandma sells runs houses in the Denver area. A few weeks ago, I had to help her evict a few college bros from one of her properties. This is a cottage style home, no second floor, no basement. These guys literally dug a hole in the wood floor and made a basement where they've been throwing trash away for the last year. Like it's a living room with a TV, a couple armchairs, and a giant hole in the ground filled with ice cream wrappers, pizza boxes, and cigarette butts. <sighs> I just can't with people. Anyways, next story. Old tenants lock their kids in the closet. How many times do we keep hearing about this? Like, it's been in the news. I swear to God, I keep hearing about, like, these parents that do, like, this god-awful shit to their kids, and I don't understand. Anyways, my parents were realtors and also flipped houses. When I was growing up, I used to help them a lot, usually by cleaning. 
When I was 12, I was helping with a house that was infested with roaches. I noticed the closets were smeared with shit and children's handprints with fingernail scratches on the insides of the doors as well. I asked my parents why this was the case. They told me the old tenants used to lock their toddlers in the closets for days. That's sick. That's truly sick. Anyways, next story. Former resident had secret cameras. <sighs> you know, I worry about this. You know, because eventually I'm going to move. And it's probably going to be a rental property, you know. And what if there's gear? I'm going to have to seriously look at the house. And I know there's like tricks to finding them. Like you take a, a bright light or whatever. And you should be able to see the reflection. And yeah, turn off all the lights and everything. But whew, it's scary still. Anyways. So two years ago, my stepdad was charged with some child porn offenses. Not a great time. Zero out of ten would recommend. <laughs> More to the point of the story. Flash forward to this October and the police contact my sister wanting to ask some questions. As it turns out, he had little creepy cameras all over the house and had been filming her since she was in grade nine until she moved out. What? Needless to say, my mother is selling the house. I feel bad for the next people who buy and possibly come across something the cops miss. That is insane. A converted Victorian era asylum. Not a realtor, but I used to rent an apartment that was in a converted Victorian asylum. It was rumored to be haunted, but I never heard or saw anything whilst living there. When I met with a leasing agent to hand the keys back at the property and for him to run through a final inspection, he asked if we had been happy there. I said something to the effect of yes, but we were only moving as the landlord had it up for sale. It became clear he was after some kind of ghost story as he explained that none of his colleagues liked going to any apartments in the building because when taking photos to market one of them, the red eye detector kept triggering on his phone when no one was in the frame. The poor guy looked nervous as heck the whole time we were there. Next story. Two homes with previous occurrences. I photograph homes. It's normal. People die in homes. Correct. In fact, my mom passed away in my dad's current apartment last year. And it's where I'm currently staying at. So, it is very normal. You, It's a different process, though. Like, when you die in your home versus dying in, like, a hospital or facility or something. It's different. Not a good different either. I don't recommend. Anyways, I photographed a few homes where the reason for sale was a recent suicide in the home. I photographed a new home that the builder took his own life in the garage just before the project was complete. The weirdest one was mostly very creepy and suspicious. I photographed a billionaire's compound where the guy had an absurd fascination with flesh. There were well over 50 heads mounted on walls from water buffalo to elephant. Five to ten large cats stuffed. Chandeliers made from the feathers of rare birds. Stools made from elephant feet and legs. Paintings and abstract photos of oily skin. Veiny muscles of humans and animals, etc., etc. I looked for his kill room, but I never found it. In general, I find billionaires don't behave like normal people. But this one was particularly weird. Oh, dude. Them rich people are really weird and they do some really weird shit. You know, we think, like, <laughs> us normal weird people think we're weird. But then you hear about, like, the stuff, like, P. Diddy's been doing. And you hear about, like, all these celebrities. And you just start hearing stuff, right? And it just makes you realize you're not that weird <laughs> after all. Anyways. Oh, here we go. Someone took their own life in one of the rooms. When we were looking to buy a house, we looked at one in which the father of the family committed suicide in. You could tell which room it was because it had clearly recently been sheetrocked and painted. 
It didn't really bother us, though, and we didn't get any creepy feelings. We chose not to put in an offer because the rest of the house needed a lot of work. And no, the realtor did not tell us that someone had passed in it. I happen to know because it is very close to the house I grew up in, and it's a very small town. I thought they were supposed to disclose that information. Anyways, next story. A lack of hobbies. My aunt is a realtor and was selling a house that a lady owned but had been renting out to her college-age son and a few of his friends. When they went to do the first walkthrough so my aunt could take pictures and such, it was apparent the lady hadn't been in the house in ages. Every single room had a TV, a chair, a box of Kleenex, and a bottle of lotion. They were literally just jacking it with each other all over the house all the time. The lady was so embarrassed. Oh my god. Anyways, next story. A monster deal. When I was looking for my last house, I went with my wife and realtor to look at several houses. We went to look at one house in particular because it didn't seem like the price they were asking for could be real. Huge house sitting on tons of land with outbuildings, going for millions under market value. We got there and the realtor said, oh, I should mention, a serial killer lived here. And when he was put away, cops found 11 bodies on the property. Oh, well, that'll do it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Anyways, next story. Owned by a heroin dealer. Not a realtor, but when the sold sign went up on our last house, our neighbor came over and said, now you're moving out. Would you like to know about your house's history? Turned out the previous owner was a heroin dealer who allowed his customers to shoot up in the living room. Explains the brown arcs all over the walls when we stripped the wallpaper. He also used to pimp his wife out from an upstairs room, our then bedroom. Lovely. Wow. That's just, I can't. I just can't. Anyways, they felt the presence of the previous owners. I failed to sell a townhouse built in the 1800s last year. Two separate buyers said they could still feel the previous owners in the house, and that's what put them off making an offer. Spooky as both sets of buyers use the specific phrase that they feel whatever is still a presence there. But seriously, I've been in a hundred spooky houses with gruesome backstories and have only got the serious creeps in two or three over my whole career. <laughs> Anyways, next story. Finding reverse locks on doors. Huh. I've been doing this job for a while now. The thing that scares me most is how often I find the locks reversed on bedroom basement doors. There's lots of crappy parents out there. That is really sick. Anyways, next story. Giant closets equals morgue remnants? Not a realtor have taken the course twice, just never took the test. But I've been in the residential property management industry for 14 years and have managed at least thousands of apartments in single family houses. A historic building I used to lease apartments for was formerly an insane was formerly an insane asylum and prior to that was a hospital. The building itself is on the National History Registry. Thankfully, I never had a bad experience here except for one unsettling thing in a stairwell but I did meet people over the years with stories. Oh, this is a long one. <laughs> anyway, certain things are required for historical landmarks and restoration tax credits in this particular city. So in many of the apartments had to maintain certain features of the original design or architecture. Like some old tile was still on the walls and floors. The thing that creeped me out was the basement even after 50 plus years on most days, you could catch a whiff of formaldehyde. Some days were more pungent and distinct than others. Of course, being in the basement, 
It also had the addition of that musty basement smell. Since this was once a hospital, obviously it had a morgue. There were a handful of apartments in the basement and the original tile on the floor marked where the morgue actually started. In one of those apartments, there is a bedroom with incredibly spacious walk-in closets. If you haven't already figured it out, these two massive closets are the old body lockers with the original latches on the walls next to the entrance to the closets. Oh my god, I still, for the life of me, cannot understand how anyone could live in that apartment because I wouldn't even go into that apartment by myself. <laughs> oh, there's comments. There wasn't comments on the other ones. What unsettling thing happened in the stairwell? Oh, okay, good. This building has a super tiny stairwell that comes from the basement to the main floor, and it goes up four steps, turns 90 degrees, and then up about five, six steps, and then 90 degrees, <laughs> and then 90 degrees and up four more steps to the landing. I've walked up and down those steps so many times and never had anything happen, but one day... I was walking up the steps and had just turned to the five, six steps and felt the steps vibrate like someone was coming up behind me, but it was loud like heavy boots or something. These steps don't make noise or anything, and I've walked them with many perspective tenants over the years. It didn't totally freak me out, but it sent an icy chill up my spine for sure. Huh. Anyways, next story. Australia's finest previously owned it. My uncle bought a caravan down the coast on a well-known beach. Just prior to selling it, police detectives turn up and turn the place upside down and inside out looking for some sort of information. Turns out the family of one of Australia's most notorious serial killers used to own the caravan many years ago. Huh. Anyways, next story. A former nunnery with a wall full of literal skeletons. This happened to some friends who bought a property, a very old site, about 300 years old, which had been part of a covenant. The aforementioned place had been refurbished as small apartments, houses, about 50 years ago. They went to live there and there was some maintenance given to certain parts of the property. There was a wall which was slightly wider than the others. They began to give maintenance to that wall, but the outer layer fell apart due to the rain and age. While trying to fix it, they found dozens of skeletons of babies. <sighs> well, authorities and historians came and went, and they came to the conclusion that the nuns tossed their babies there right after giving birth to them. Lord knows if they were alive or dead by then. <sighs> How were they getting pregnant? I thought nuns were supposed to be um, practicing cel celibacy. I can't even say the word because I can't do it. <laughs> celibacy. There we go. I said it. Not that I practice it. But anyways, I'm not understanding here. I really thought that that was like the biggest part of their, their lives is that they gave themselves to God. So apparently they gave themselves to somebody else, probably the pastor or whatever, and he made all these babies with all these nuns. How did they hide that from other people though? My God, too many questions. Anyways, next story. MIA former owner found in the attic. Property inspection turned up a body in the attic. A suicide where someone hung themselves. Homeowner thought her husband had left her years ago. But he was... She never went in the attic? Ah, for years. For years. That was a three-sentence story. And in years, she never went up into the attic. I don't believe that story. I don't believe that. I do not believe that for years this woman didn't go up into her attic. Where did she store like her decorations and shit? Not in the basement. Basements flood all the time. So if you have an attic, 
naturally you're going to store like your decorations and shit up there. So why was this woman not going in the, she's a liar. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I don't believe her. <laughs> I don't believe the woman did not go in her attic for years. Anyways, wouldn't be the craziest story we heard, right? Next story. It used to be a Jean Talia, Jean Talia Enlargement Center. I don't know what that is. Australian property manager here. I had, okay, so the GoPro shut off because it got too hot. Obviously, it's very bright out and it's sitting right in the sun, so it died. Anyways, it used to be a gen genitalia enlargement center. Genitalia. You know, I didn't get that at the last part either. It used to be a genitalia enlargement center. <laughs> why, why did I have so many issues with that word? I don't think they spelled it right, for starters. Australian property manager here. It had taken on a new property which had a bathroom vanity in each bedroom. I questioned the landlord to why the bedrooms required sinks. He informed me the house was previously a penis enlargement center. Had a bunch of Eunice students move in and disclose to them the reason. They thought it was a great story and lived happily in the penis center home. <laughs> Anyways, next story. Built with stolen materials. I learned just how extensively... The original builder had embezzled from the school district to build the house. People of a certain age would marvel at the fact that all the bricks, flooring, door, and window frames, light fixtures, all kinds of elements were exactly 1920s public school construction. Turns out the builder was a school superintendent and deliberately built the house with diverted materials and labor from a school project. He was caught and publicly shamed for it. Good. That's a dirty thing to do. That money's supposed to be for the kids, man. That's why they're not getting the education that they need. Anyways, commercial property was a former tug and rub and more. <laughs> oh, God. From the other side of the fence. I went with a friend of mine to view commercial properties for his startup computer business. There was one in particular that he was very excited to see, as the setup sounded just perfect. It had a large front room for seating customers display, was in a strip mall with several other businesses, and it had two back rooms, one he could use for stock, one he could use for doing repairs. It also had its own portion of the basement for additional stock or whatever he might need it for. We hadn't been in the door more than 30 seconds, and the realtor started telling us how it was a combo nail salon massage parlor before it was seized and her company bought it. Yeah, massage parlor and seized. You know where this is going. The two back rooms still had the mattresses on the floor, and there were about eight more mattresses and lots of women's clothing scattered around the basement. He didn't take the property, even though I told him he should have. The looks on the faces of old clients that came in still expecting the brothel to be there would have been priceless. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> on that note, if you liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. I love to have new friends. And as always, I appreciate you and I appreciate your time for watching my video. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!